This is a defining moment for the Senate in a couple of ways. Uh, the Democratic senators have an alternative to the House passed jobs bill. Uh, they'll get a vote on their alternative. That's good. Uh, I believe the House passed jobs bill that had overwhelming bipartisan support is a good document. I will support that version over my Senate Democratic colleagues. But let me tell you what our Senate Democratic colleagues have done that I think is very constructive. XM Bank is trying to be made part of the jobs bill in the Senate. And it's Export-Import Bank. What does this mean? This is a financing uh, 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 ability by American companies who are selling overseas in volatile or uh, emerging markets. It's a, it's a financing system that's been available since 1934. If you're going to try to sell a product made in America to a place in the world where traditional banking is hard to obtain, you can go to the XM Bank and they will give a letter of credit. They will sometimes give a direct loan to people who want to buy American products. It made the bank itself made three and a half billion dollars for the taxpayer, I think since 2005 and six. And here's the reality. Every country we compete with has their version of XM Bank. Uh, in Canada, one tenth our size, we finance $32 billion worth of American-made products sold overseas through our XM system last year. Canada financed $100 billion. Uh, France has three XM banks. China has more XM activity than the United States, France, and Germany uh, combined. Everybody that American manufacturing competes with, uh, every country, that produces products has their version of the XM Bank. At the end of the May, our XM Bank's authorization runs out. Our loan limits run out a few weeks earlier. This would be devastating. Small companies throughout this country uh, depend on XM Bank to sell American-made products overseas. And let me give you one good example. It's been the topic of conversation. Boeing Aircraft makes airplanes in America, the 787 Dreamliner. It was voted the best new airplane in a long time here recently, something that Boeing is proud of. They make it in Washington, now in South Carolina. The first airplane to be made in South Carolina will roll out here in about a, a, a month or less, about a month from now. Uh, the facility is under budget, ahead of schedule, and we're proud of that airplane. Eight out of the 10 airplanes being made in South Carolina in the first year were XM financed. There was a deal between Boeing and Air India where a letter of credit was issued by XM Bank to allow uh, traditional financing to occur, and Boeing was able to sell uh, a, a big order of uh, American-made jets to Air India. And uh, that's just one example. GE makes uh, uh, turbines, gas turbines, to generate power for emerging areas like Afghanistan, Iraq, the Mideast, Africa. All these uh, distressed areas are going to grow and they're going to need power. One third of the sales coming out of Greenville, South Carolina for the gas turbines made in America, creating American jobs, go through XM financing. So here's the issue. If America allows our XM financing system to go away in May, if that's the will of the Congress, then you've destroyed the ability of many companies in this country to grow their business. As the economy has been weak and stagnant here at home, here's the good news. In terms of exports, we've increased our export sales 20 percent. Imagine an America that could not continue to increase export sales. Imagine a Boeing manufacturer that could not ever sell an American-made airplane in a volatile or emerging market and because China is now making airplanes, Airbus has access to three or four XM banks. It would be an ill-conceived idea. This program has been around a long time. It's helped create thousands of jobs in the United States. And everybody that we compete with, they have a more aggressive form of XM financing than we do. So to my colleagues who want to eliminate this, I just don't understand how American business could ever successfully compete in these emerging markets if we unilaterally disarm. To my Democratic colleagues, thank you for bringing up XM Bank. To our majority leader, Senator Reid, this is a good idea. What's a bad idea is not to let anybody on the Republican side offer one amendment to this bill. Some of the ideas to reform XM Bank I would agree to. I think any organization, any entity can be made better. 
I just want to be able to get back to being in a body called the United States Senate where people with different ideas on important topics can actually vote. So to my colleagues on this side, I, I may vigorously oppose some of you who decide that XM Bank should go away because I think that'd be the worst thing you could do for the American economy, particularly export jobs being created in this country, and it would just be unilaterally surrendering in the world marketplace. And whether you like it or not, other countries are XM banking on steroids, and if we just get out of this business, uh, people like Boeing will cease to be able to sell airplanes, and you'll shut down facilities like South Carolina. Not a very good idea. Now, at the end of the day, you do have a right to have your say, and we'll have the debate that I'm looking forward to about what we should or shouldn't do. But under the process now, Mr. President, we have not one minute amendment can be offered on our side. And we just got to do better than that. We had a, a transportation bill that had a lot of amendments passed with 74 votes. We've had a, 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 good, uh, a good exchange here lately with judges. I'm very proud of what uh, our minority and majority leader worked out on judges. I want to get the Senate back to being the Senate. I think XM reauthorization, it should be an integral par part of any jobs bill. I want to put it in the Senate bill. I will gladly vote for it. And there are a bunch of Republicans over here that will support extension of XM financing with reforms. But none of us want to be put in a situation where our colleagues can't have a say that disagree with us or that we can't reform the bill. So that's just not the way to go. So I hope between now and 4 o'clock that the minority leader and the majority leader can find a way to bring up the jobs bill, allowing it to be amended in an appropriate way and taking votes some of us don't like but is part of democracy and have a robust debate on a jobs package that couldn't come at a better time and include in that debate XM reauthorization at a time when America needs more jobs here at home. The economy at home is weak. The one good thing about what's happening here at home is that our export sales have gone up, and the way that you create export jobs in America is you allow American businesses to compete on a level playing field throughout the world. I wish the world were different. I wish we had completely free markets. Every American business could do fine in that world, but that's not the way it is. An XM bank doesn't cost the taxpayer one dime. It makes money for the Treasury and allows American businesses to be competitive. So I'm urging the two leaders of the Senate to allow Jobs Bill to come forward, have our say, have our differences, let's debate, let's vote, let's amend, and let's create jobs in America.